going on guys? Arix here and today we're going to be checking out the uh, Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. Massive shout out to the guys over at Sony for very kindly sending me this phone. Now yes, I am not a phone tech channel. This is not going to be a conventional phone video because that's not the kind of content I do and if you guys want to watch a video about this phone there are plenty of them on YouTube. But specifically today, the reason I want to talk about this is from a gaming perspective, because there's some rather interesting specs in this that make it quite a nice device to play games on. Now, yes, I know a lot of people will be like, whoa, hold on a minute, mobile games, you casual gamer. Just stop, just stop, all right? There are legitimately some good mobile games. I know this is not the point where I go into a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship. We're not doing that, but more to the point, there are genuinely some good mobile games. Gone are the days of like Farmville and like, I don't know, some random Facebook games and playing Bejeweled on your phone. Not to say Bejeweled is a bad game, it's not. But the point is, you can get, you know, with phones getting ever more powerful, with the screens getting better, you can genuinely get some pretty good gaming experiences on your phone. And obviously when we can eventually start traveling again and you're on the go, I'm sure all of us have played our fair share of mobile games when you're on the go. So with that being said, today I wanna to talk about this, take a look at it in the vein of a potential kind of portable gaming device, talk about some of that stuff like that. I also do wanna to touch on the camera because the camera in this is really nice. And that's basically what I use my phone for. I use my phone for social media, I take photos with it, and I play the occasional game on it. So today we're gonna to open this up, see what's inside, talk a little bit about it, and give you guys a look at the device. So if you do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think of it. And of course, stick around for plenty more. So let's begin at the top. If we uh, open this up, inside the box we of course have the, uh, the phone itself, which it is not cheap, by the way. This is not an entry level device. The phone in the UK goes for about 1100 pounds. In the US, that is around $1,200. It is not a cheap phone, but hey, we are of course in that timeline where like an iPhone costs you nearly a thousand pounds. So uh, it's becoming strangely more normal for a phone to cost that much. Mind boggling as it is, but anyway, it's not a cheap phone. That being said, inside the box, you have the phone itself, you have a USB-C cable, you have a uh, fast charger, not the fastest charger. This is like an 18 volt one, so it's pretty fast, but you know, there are faster ones on the market, but it's still a fast charger. And you also have a pair of headphones with a regular 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is awesome. The amount of phones, I mean, I've got the iPhone here and it's just like, I wanna charge it. I don't wanna listen to stuff. I know there's Bluetooth headphones. I know there's splitters. I don't wanna carry those. Like, so the idea of having a legitimate port there and the ability to charge it there. Why is something so simple, so revolutionary? I'm just like, this is awesome. Bring this back. I miss the days of just being able to plug my headphones in and charge my phone. Is that so much to ask? Anyway, that aside, talking a little bit about the uh, phone specs, kind of top level, just to sort of give you an idea as to what we're playing with here. First things first, you'll of course notice the screen. This is a very, very nice 21 by nine cinema wide 4K HDR OLED display. You got a nice 6.5 inch screen. One of the nice things about this being ultra wide as well is it is actually a very slim phone. You know, you compare it to, this is an iPhone 10, like side by side. I mean, this is kind of similar thickness, but some of the other like phones in the market are quite a bit thicker. So, you know, it's actually quite like, you know, as phones go, it's quite a slim phone to kind of hold in your hand, which works quite well because, you know, some of the bigger phones just feel like a mini tablet in your hand. This is actually quite nice. The tall form factor does mean like to stretch from top to bottom of the screen can be a bit of a challenge, but overall it's a, a very kind of comfortable hand or comfortable hand, comfortable phone to hold in your hand. Now, go back to the screen for a minute. While yes, it is 4K HDR OLED display, it is only 60 hertz refresh rate, which is still nice. There are of course faster refresh rate phones out there, but what is worth noting is that there is a software system built into this whereby you can get effectively 90 hertz refresh rate with this sort of like motion blur reduction. So it can kind of sort of simulate 90 hertz, which is, you know, quite nice. But overall, main thing is playing games on this just feels really nice. Like it's a really nice screen, like very, very like the colors are really crisp, it's got great viewing angles. It's very nice to use. The wider form factor does mean that if you happen to like, you know, be putting your fingers on the screen to kind of, you know, use like digital joysticks, then you actually have a bit more room. Whereas if you kind of take a, like a regular size phone, and you're sort of doing that, then you tend to take up a bit more space in the, you know, in the actual like screen real estate, so to speak. So that in itself does work quite nicely. Obviously, you've also got a SIM and a micro SD card tray. So, you know, you can expand the uh, memory in this one. You've got all your usual buttons that you would expect, power button, volume rocker, but rather nicely, you do also have on the top there, a dedicated camera button, which again, it's not exactly revolutionary, 
but seemingly a lot of phones don't necessarily always have this. I know it's kind of like moved into other buttons, like on iPhone you can press like the, is it the volume rocker? One of them. Point is, you have a dedicated photo button, which is very nice. Like having that, you know, kind of readily available up there when you want to sort of take your photos, it does actually feel very nice. On top of that, it's also got Gorilla Glass and it's got an IP68 rating, so uh, it's kind of waterproof. Maybe if you're gaming and you have those rage moments and you throw your phone, wouldn't advise it. But if you throw your phone and it ricochets off the wall and falls in the toilet, it's probably going to be okay. Now on the camera front, I'm gonna kind of rattle through this quickly because obviously I do largely speak and want to speak about this from a gaming point of view, but the camera is really nice. On the front, you've got an eight megapixel front facing camera. Then on the back, you have three different cameras. You've got uh, all of the cameras, by the way, are 12 megapixels, just kind of flat across the board. But you have the primary lens, which is uh, f1.7 aperture. You've got a telephoto lens, which is f2.4. And you've got an ultra wide camera, which is f2.2. There's also a depth sensor in there to kind of help with uh, focus. You've got a really, really fast burst shooting mode. You've got 20 FPS burst shooting so that is incredibly fast like one of the things that they state on the website many many times is that this is a fast phone and it's also got inbuilt facial and eye tracking so if you are doing those burst photos for sport photography wildlife photography it's actually really good at just kind of catching the creature or the focal point without blurring this is clearly made as like a device for pro photographers pro kind of cinematographers because you've also got a pro camera and a pro cinematography app where basically instead of having the regular stuff you've got all the bells and whistles the ui is very similar to that of like if any of you guys have used a sony alpha series camera it's the one that i film these videos on then the ui is very similar you can tweak things and change things like iso and white balance and all those kind of different things like that you've got complete control over it even in the cinema app you've got control over frame rate different picture profiles it's actually really good there is a regular mode if you don't want to get that complicated but you do have those options so yeah from a, like a photography point of view if you i mean i feel like everyone buys their phones for a couple of main reasons you want a nice camera on it so you can take photos and you just want it to be a good phone and you know this has obviously got all the kind of hardware inside it you've got the snapdragon 865 chipset so you know you obviously got a lot of uh, power behind this eight gigabytes of ram so uh you know that paired with a nice screen nice camera it is actually quite a compelling package. But let's talk about the gaming aspect, because of course, you know, I mentioned before, there are a lot more games available on mobile these days. I mean, you've got the obvious ones like your Fortnites and your Call of Duty Mobile, but on top of that, you've got games like Monster Hunter Stories, which is a fantastic game. Genshin Impact is releasing on uh, PS4, mobile devices and PC. If you haven't seen that, we did a video on that on the channel, obviously not on mobile specifically, but it's coming to mobile. That's a great game. Being able to play that on the go is really, really cool. You've got games like Sky, Pokemon Unite they just announced, which is like the, the MOBA for Pokemon. Maybe not the most popular choice, but again, that's coming to mobile devices. You've even got like Diablo Immortal. I mean, yes, Diablo 4 is far more exciting, but assuming they haven't scrapped that project, you know, you've got games like that as well. So it is definitely increasingly more possible to have fully fledged experiences on your phone. So whereas a few years ago, we might have been like, huh, mobile gaming, yeah, whatever. Whereas now it is genuinely a kind of a more viable conversation. Obviously the additional nice thing is that you can pair the phone with a PlayStation controller incredibly easily. You literally just hold down the uh, PlayStation button, the share button, syncs up as a Bluetooth device, and then suddenly you can control the phone with that. So, you know, pair that with something like a nice little grip and you can kind of just put the phone in there straight away and you can be playing your games with your PlayStation controller, which again, you know, pair the kind of nice big screen with the fact that you've got like a, you know, your full analog control there actually makes for quite a nice experience. I mean, you're basically working on a form factor that's not too dissimilar to that of like a Nintendo Switch. So uh, yeah, that works out quite nicely. And of course, if you happen to download the uh, Remote Play app as well, you can even play actual games from your PS4 onto your mobile device. So, you know, you could be playing Last of Us, God of War, Spider-Man, whatever you want on this nice screen on the go. So, you know, again, pretty compelling. However, a few other things worth noting. So on the phone, everything is wrapped up in this thing that is called the uh, Game Enhancer app. So it's basically like your game hub. And then when you go inside that, there's a load of different customization options, which actually make kind of the experience a lot better. So, you know, when it comes to like a per game basis, you can adjust the different profiles, whether you want to play balanced for like more battery life, whether you want to play high performance. And one of the cool things is there's actually a kind of special mode, like for, you know, when you're gaming, where you can plug your charging cable in and it will not use the battery at all. It's not one of those ones where you'll be charging the battery while simultaneously using it. If you turn this mode on and you plug the charger in, it will bypass the battery and just use it plugged in. Now, obviously, if you're using this on the go, that doesn't necessarily 
matter too much. But if you're sitting at home and you were actually sitting like on a sofa or something and plugging it in, then you can kind of prolong the battery life by not even using it and bypassing that. And all the kind of settings you make in this app as well, they save per game. So if I booted up something like Rune Terror, I was like, ah, I'll play that on balance, but I'm playing something like, I don't know, Genshin Impact on like high, then whenever you launch your games, it'll save all of those, which is kind of handy. The phone also has inbuilt native screen recording. So if you want to record your gameplay, record other stuff like that, that's all built in. And you can even insert your face camera in. You can even use the front facing camera to put a face cam into your gameplay, position that on there, and then use that to record your own gaming videos straight from your phone which is also pretty cool. And one of the other features I thought was kind of interesting, I mean, I'm not entirely sure whether this is like a, a first or something like that, but the search feature that's baked into it, like if you're playing a game, like if you're playing Rune Terror and you just hit the search button, it suddenly pulls up a YouTube list of all the videos that are related to that game, which is kind of cool from like a quick search point of view. So if you were getting stuck and then you were like, hey, let me search this, you might even find some of our videos there, which is kind of awesome. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the time being. That's a quick look at the uh, Sony Xperia 1 Mark II from the point of view from gaming, it is definitely very comfortable. I mean, to kind of like, you know, the screen is such a nice size. The 4K HDR kind of OLED colors, super bright, super vibrant. Very, very nice to kind of like have that sort of immersive experience because, you know, you might think a phone isn't necessarily as big as playing like a big screen, which obviously it isn't. But if you think of it, if you like an XK kind of playing Nintendo Switch on the go or back in the days of like playing PS Vita and things like that, like this is quite a nice big size screen. So a lot of games, they look very nice on the sort of ultra wide display. And again, pair it with a controller and it's actually quite a comfortable gaming experience. So uh, I enjoyed the look of it. Hopefully you guys did. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have got any questions. Again, massive shout out to Sony for very kindly providing us with the phone. And uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.